When you're talking about St. Lucia Jazz and Arts, the name Rob Zai is synonymous with this festival. Rob, how are you feeling? Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Janelle. Good to be here with you guys. Tell us a little bit about your history with the festival. Well, I've been here, uh, I was born in England and, uh, and raised here, so I've been here from the, the start of the festival, really, and, uh, and watched it grow and be part of it, and uh, aspired as well, like so many other uh, St. Lucian artists, to be on the main stage, and, uh, and kind of paid my dues along the way and worked up to it and, and played at a lot of the venues uh, that have uh, um, developed on the island throughout the years. And um, it's just, it's really good to see, to see it grow and be part of it and to see all these, you know, all the big names that come down here to St. Lucia to, 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 to see them live and direct and sometimes get a chance to meet them as well. So it's, yeah. uh, it's a really good thing. Give us your international perspective of the festival and how you see it really nurturing local talent on the island. Well, I think that that is a good question. It, I think it could nurture talent a lot more than it has done over the years. Um, the, the focus of the festival really um, from inception has really been to increase tourism arrival in St. Lucia um, in, a, in a quieter spot of the, of the, of the year. And, it, and it's really achieved that purpose. Um, it's achieved that objective and, and gotten there. Um, I think now, um, 22 years on, they're now, they're now realizing that the emphasis needs to change and they need to um, start promoting and showcasing more of the, the, the solution talent and the emerging talent. I'm so happy to hear you say that, Rob, because we go to festivals all the time throughout the region and we see these big international headliners. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when the local artists come on stage, the crowd goes wild, even wilder for the local talent. What advice or insight could you share with these festival organizers in the Caribbean about putting the local Caribbean artists front line, sometimes even headlining the show sure. where the international artists might be the opening act? Well, I, I think it, I think it's uh, uh, a, very, a, a, a misconception um, with a lot of the organizer, organizers, probably definitely here in St. Lucia, but I'm sure in other islands as well, that, that um, and not just to do with music, but to do with anything um, in business and life, that foreign is always better. And it's not really the case. And, and, and especially, as you said, then the majority of your, the, the, the audience, the people, that, the, the, the ticket buyers that come to the festivals are um, from the island. Um, they're the ones obviously that are gonna know the, 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 the island talent more so than anybody else. And I think it's important to, to for the organizers to recognize that island talent and, um, allow that talent to be showcased. And when I say that, what, what has happened here in all the years I know the St. Lucia Jazz Festival is, yes, the St. Lucian artists get the opportunity to perform on the main stage, but what has happened and has also happened in my case is that opportunity is normally the first band on. And we all know what happens to the first band that is on. We're normally the guinea pigs for the sound and it's always a case of building up the momentum of the show. So you really start with the locals and that's understandable in one way, but at the same time too, I've seen it in other festivals just like Barbados as well, where there's a lot more national pride, um, you know, of putting putting the, your your um, national acts forward and and don't put them on first. Um, put them on slap in the middle of the festival. They don't necessarily have to headline and be the last band, but put them on in the middle. And the reason for that too is because what you see here at the St. Lucia Jazz Festival is that um, the St. Lucian bands that end up going on first don't necessarily get um, the the big audience because people are still arriving and more importantly so they don't get the international press because they necessarily haven't arrived and that's very important because I can take myself as, a, as an example the, the, the couple of times I've had the opportunity to play main stage I, I take it very seriously obviously and I put, I put everything back in there it's a personal investment to me not necessarily to make money on that time but to showcase what I do to an international audience and to and to the international media so that is what's very important to really get you know to we, 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 we're Whatever island you're from, we're on a little rock here. We're a little dot on that globe, you know, and it's a big world out there. So right. we've got to shout loud, right? So you get these opportunities where you've got a, an international audience and, and viewership, whether it's TV or radio, and you, you need that opportunity to get it out there. And sometimes the organizers are not necessarily artistically inclined mm -hmm. and so necessarily don't understand that and, and need to, I think, incorporate some of the more serious, well-established um, national acts in the decision making and, 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 and everything you know over the years the, there's there's a lot of interest from the the mainstream the international labels promoters and everything with what's going on in the Caribbean whether you go back to the days of Bob Marley to Sean Paul to Rihanna you know people are interested in what's happening here a lot of the mainstream music has got Caribbean elements within that music I think it's that appeal of discovering um, some unknown artist 
you know, especially from the Caribbean, somebody who's got a story behind them, you know, something that they can sell, because that's what it's about at the end of the day. And I think with the, uh, the, the fact that the, the internet is available to all of us now, it really is a level playing field for, for Caribbean artists, just as it is North American or European artists. So, you know, we, we, we have got to do our part too. You know, they, we, we've got to get our, ourselves out there on YouTube. We've got to get our website sorted out, got to get our presence felt. We've got to do more publicity for ourselves in trade magazines. That's what promoters want to see. So, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're creating a buzz in your own locale, in your own region, in your own few islands around you, then the, 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 the other promoters, I think, will quicker um, take notice and, and quicker want to get you involved and maybe bring you over there. And, 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 you know, networking and personal relationships with people go a long way. You know, you, know, you never know who knows who, you know, and that's what it's about, you know. Stay humble and wise. Right. <laughs> when I first picked up the saxophone, I obviously I, I, I could play a little bit of music before because I played piano. But uh, the first song I learned to play just by ear was The Lion Sleeps Tonight. In the jungle, the quiet jungle, wow. the lion sleeps tonight. And that was the first thing within the first like 10 minutes. I just picked it up, worked it out. I'm like, whoa, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, it went from there. <laughs> right. And now you've created an identity for an entire island and an entire region oh, of jazz lovers. <laughs> Rob, thank you so much. Where can we find more of your music and catch up with you and keep up with your, your movements? Well, you, you can go to my uh, website, robzaitaylor.com. Look out for me. Just Google White Rastaman in St. Lucia, you must find me. <laughs> <laughs> this one exclusive scene. <laughs> on Dial and Exclusive. Hi, I'm Janelle Vonte, your Island Exclusive Guide, and when I'm in Barbados, I get first-class transportation from courtesy rent-a-car Barbados.